if you're thinking about doing it, just do it, go. It never gets any easier. Years down the track, you're gonna have more reasons, you're gonna have more financial commitments and career obligations, more reasons not to go and to put it off. Be flexible. Things can and often do change at the last minutes. The date of departure will probably change and even the destination may change. Pack wisely. Get a hard drive and fill it with any single PDF or document of a guideline, protocol, interesting reading that you think may be helpful out there. Put your favourite TV show on there as well. Internet access may be patchy or non-existent altogether. Take a headlamp or a head torch. You don't want to tread on a snake at night on the way to the latrine. And definitely take gifts for your fellow volunteers. Newspaper, magazines, cheese, salami, goes down a treat. There are definitely a lot of light, funny things that happen out there, but there's also a lot of very difficult things, frustrating things, and of course very sad things. And I think invariably the people that can laugh these things off or sit around and have a laugh with their colleagues tend to do better and cope better. Read as much as you can about the context before you go. You probably won't have time when you're out there, and I think understanding the historical and cultural context to some degree before you go make it infinitely easier for you and your colleagues. Pray or meditate or accrue good karma or flirt with someone in human resources. Do whatever you can, whatever works for you to make sure that you get posted with good colleagues because this really is the make or break thing out there. You're going to spend every single meal and every single day off and evening with the same handful of people for months and months on end. Obviously you can't choose them, but I think being aware of the fact that this can be tricky is a good thing. When you first arrive in the field, just observe, just stand back and watch and listen. There's such a temptation among volunteers to rush in and start fixing all the problems that y you can see and, and the way that people are doing things out there. But very often there are good reasons that these things are happening. Be humble. For me, this was really the most important thing. The people you're working with, um, patients and staff, come from such different backgrounds and very often extremely difficult backgrounds. The staff that I worked with, in many cases, were had been refugees themselves and had experienced decades of conflict, if not, you know, born into conflict. And I think that's something to really keep in mind. There's times when you get frustrated with the way they do things. And I remember distinctly pulling up one of our South Sudanese staff members one night because he kept calling me for frivolous things. And I discovered weeks later that he actually couldn't read. A very good health worker and had just committed all the stuff to memory, but he couldn't read. And so I think to go in there with your very kind of Western idea of this is how we do it back home and this is how you need to do it here is, um, is naive at best and, and, and frankly colonialist at worst. Take time out and get out and about in the community as much as possible. You know, not just for your own sanity, but it's just really to remind you of why you're here and, and, and make contact with the local people. Uh, I remember every evening on my first posting, we used to walk on the one road we were allowed on down to the river in town. And um, it was just such a small thing, but a young girl kept stopping us and insisted that we take a photo with her. And I noticed after a few weeks that she was always carrying this beer bottle and she was about five years old. And, so I stopped her one day and I said, you know, what on earth are you doing with a, uh, with a bottle of beer? And she just smiled and in all sincerity said that this wasn't a beer bottle, this was a doll. And there was a tuft of synthetic hair jammed into the top. And just those little moments, I think, really sort of drive home more than any images in the hospital or any conversations, just drive home what these people are living with. And Expect to be single for a while. Working in these isolated conditions with small groups of people is not particularly conducive to finding your life partner. That said, when, when I was working for six months with a team of four people, we had two sets of visitors and one of my colleagues is now married to one of those people. Um, but I don't think it's particularly conducive to meeting a, a partner. But then again, neither is going bald or writing a book, so I'm, I'm not an expert. Mm -hmm.